Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Sitter. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And if you're like me, you have a million drum samples out there. And sometimes when you sit down to write drums, you don't have to go through every single drum to find the perfect kick drum and the perfect snare drum and all that kind of stuff. So I want to talk to you about a little solution that I have started using more recently, which are the drum synth instruments inside of Ableton Live Suite. Before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It is greatly appreciated. So uh, these drum synth instruments have been around for a long time, but they've mostly lived in the Max for Live folder, and now they're available just directly in the Instruments tab uh, if you own Suite. And as you can see, there's a bunch of them, and there's different ones for different kinds of drums. The main two I want to talk about today are the drum synth kick and the drum synth hi-hat. I think these two are by far the best sounding of all of the drum synth ones. The other ones are okay, they have their uses, I think they have potential, um, but these two just straight out of the box, just really easy to use and just allow you to do a lot of cool, fast, easy sound design. So we're going to open up drum synth just by adding it to a mini track like this, and you, as you can see, it's just a little tiny instrument, there's only eight parameters on this thing, and it sounds like a kick drum. Now, if you have watched any of my videos in the past, I did a video actually a long time ago on uh, kick drum synthesis. So you can use any synthesizer you want to design your own drum sounds. It's really fun, it's really easy. I'll put a link up in the corner so you can check out that video. However, it can take some time. And part of the whole goal of my making this video is that uh, this is a fast solution. This is a synthesizer that only has eight parameters and all of them are going to affect your drum sound in ways that are interesting and help make the drums sound better. So that's really the, the goal here is that it's fast, it's easy, and it sounds good. So first off, you may notice that it is fixed frequency. So you can play any MIDI note you want. I can play a high MIDI note or a low MIDI note. Doesn't matter, it's always the same frequency. I can tune it right here. And it gives me the pitch in Hertz and it also tells me the closest note right here. So I can pitch it up or down or you can just keep it at, at F. Uh, the three parameters down here are gonna be really important. Obviously we have volume, Turn that bad boy up. Uh, the decay is going to be how long it rings out for. So if I turn this down, we're going to get much like tighter, more kind of like houseier kind of kick drum. And if you turn this way up, you get your much more, more kind of like boomy 808 style kick. So really useful control right here. Then we have this envelope control, which it says it affects the volume envelope, which it does. But if you listen really closely, you can also hear uh, it is going to affect the pitch envelope as well. So as you turn this down, you're going to get less of a pitch envelope. Something like that. And as you turn this up, you're going to start hearing the pitch move from high pitch to low pitch uh, as you turn this up. So here it sounds a lot more kind of pitchy. Here it does not. This knob is fantastic. It does a lot of different kinds of altering to your sound with one control. So if you're looking to get like a slightly different style of kick or you want a kick that sounds you know, good specifically for the song you're work, working on right now, this knob does a lot of work for you and get a lot of really cool things. These two especially, but this one does a lot. Other than that, we have four extra parameters. We have a drive slash overtone. Uh, the drive is going to be this one right here. This is going to add a little bit of distortion or a lot of distortion, depending on how much you turn it up. Uh, and honestly, it sounds really good. So if you turn it up a little bit, it adds this nice little bit of beefiness to your kick that I think is really helpful. If you turn it up too high, it gets very hard style very fast. Which, if you're into hard style, is great. Um, I'm not going to be making that usually, so... A lot of times I like it in kind of like the like 5 to 20, 25%. Sounds, I think, pretty good, and it's not too over the top, and it, it works. The overtones is going to add like a little bit of noise to the mid-range. I'm not a huge fan of this, but I think it could be really helpful if you're having trouble getting your kick to like sit or stick out of your mix. turn it way up, it adds almost to this kind of like bit crushing kind of sound. But I think a little bit of that could be kind of useful, just to add a little bit of tone to your kick. Uh, we have an attack control right here. So if you turn this up, it's going to fade in your kick, which means you're going to get less of that transient, less of that impact. So if you want a bit more of like a smoother kind of kick, if you turn that up, you can hear it has like a nice long attack. Whereas you keep it down, you get a nice kind of impact with it. Uh, there's also this click control. Uh, if you turn this on, it's going to add a little bit of like a mid-range, almost kind of like a high-pitched click. 
Uh, this also might be kind of nice if you want your kick to stick out of your mix a little bit more. I usually don't use this, but it could be cool. Uh, and that's it. That's all you get in here, which is fantastic. It's quick. It's easy. I didn't use this for a long time, like I said, because I would just synthesize things with Operator or something like that. But I've been using it more recently, and I figured it's worth pointing out because it sounds really good. And uh, I, I'm always impressed when I can make something sound good in like 30 seconds or less. That's what I'm going for. If you would like to uh, really kind of refine this, or actually what I usually do to really kind of make this kick sound really good, is take the saturator, toss it on here. Saturator is a fantastic effect. Uh, I usually turn up the drive for about five or so, and then switch this over to the soft sign setting. And all of a sudden, I get like a nice sounding kick, but like actually a really good solid sounding kick, depending on what I want to get out of it. Really easy to use. Um, there's my big kick. So try those two out together, work really well. The other drum synth that I do want to point out, uh, it's worth checking out, is the hi-hat. I'm not going to go through all the features because they're pretty self-explanatory. It sounds like a hi-hat, but a lot of times I don't want to go through a million different hi-hat samples. This sounds great. There's my hi-hat. I can make a real quick hi-hat, longer hi-hat. I can pitch it. White noise, pink noise, tone controls. A little attack. So really easy. Hi hats. Usually, I'm not like super concerned about making them like absolutely perfect, but this is a lot of diversity in one really nice, really tight instrument. The other thing I would like to point out is that because that they are instruments, you could just take all of these and put them in a drum rack. So if I have an empty drum rack, I could go to my drum synth, toss my kick here, toss my hi hat here, and then boom, I can start using those and then customizing those all inside of one drum rack. Uh, so that's kind of the idea here. Hopefully that is useful and informative to you. Really quick, really easy to use devices. Um, I'm going to spend some more time with specifically the snare and the clap and see if I can really kind of dial them in and make them really sound good. As of right now, I'm probably just going to stick with snare and clap samples, but for hi-hats and kicks, uh, I'm going to spend some more time with these drum synth devices and probably start using them in a lot of my productions because that they're, it's faster and it's easier and it's more fun than scrolling through a sample library to do a lot of my drums. So hopefully that is useful for you. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, do you like these drum synths? Have you used them? Have you not used them? Uh, so how did they go? Um, but that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I will see you again in another video.